are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone Youth. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob, and you're listening to episode number 273. It's a happy Monday morning, and we're glad that you're spending a few minutes of your Monday with us. Monday, Monday, Monday. Especially if you're off today and you're still spending a few minutes of your day. Yeah, with why us. are we in here today? Well, because Can we I don't take get day days off, off Paul. <laughs> I don't know where you ever got that idea. Mm, well, I don't know. Maybe. Wishful thinking, no doubt. Yes, but any, everyone, uh, welcome guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. We've got an awesome show lined up for you today. Um, really talking about, uh, our question today is about a new drone that's come out, and uh, we're looking forward to testing hopefully another new drone this weekend. We'll see what uh, comes about that. Yeah, I think that's actually one of our initiatives for this year. Is let's start testing more of these drones, flying them more, uh, more soon after they come out, if I can say it that way. Mm, yes. Thank you. I will say, though... Uh, you know, one of the things that I've learned uh, in the last year is that you can never give a review of a drone unless, A, you really know a lot about drones, and, B, you get to fully test the drone. I mean, right. like, you have it for, like, a couple days or a week or so. Um, and I say that because, you know, we did the solo test at, at CE or CES or NAB. I forget what it was. Uh, and I, I was, it was a CES 2014. 14? 15. 15? It had to be 15, yeah. yeah. 15, I guess. Oh. Anyway, uh, we did that review, and then when the... No, I think it, I'm pretty sure it was 15. I'm pretty sure, because it was last I thought January. thought CES 2015, they weren't... Was it just 20... Okay, now we're really kind of going off yeah. track here, but you're right. Um, it was 15. Anyway, when we were testing the Solo, uh, it when we flew it inside, it was flying great, and then we took it outside once we finally got one. It was a totally different story. So when I see people who make reviews about drones just that they've seen at trade shows um, or just flying in certain, certain environments instead of all the environments, um, yeah. I really, you know, kind of, I don't think that people are really getting a quality review. So it is why I want to do more reviews this year so that we can have a great, great pilot, B, test all the different environments because we're at a higher elevation. So we can test uh, the drone in Arizona where it's, you know, low elevation and test it here because there are certain little nuances, Rob, that make a huge difference in being able to fly in high elevation. Absolutely. And something that looks <laughs> form once you actually get it flying, it's going to be potentially a lot different from what you expected. Absolutely. And all of that said, Paul, we've got somebody asking us about a drone that we've not flown. Let's just go ahead and play the question. So we're still going to give our opinions, but just with that disclaimer, right? That, that we've yes. not flown it. And I will say that again because... I am going to judge this drone based off of the components. Yeah, basically spec review almost. Spec review, video review. But I will say this. One thing I've learned a lot is that you can tell a lot about a drone based off of certain combinations of parts, meaning sure. the type of battery to the type of motor to the type of prop. Because that uh, the prop ESC motor combination is so important. And you can tell a lot about a drone when you factor in that battery. Is it a 3S battery? Is it a 4S battery? You know, how many milliamps is it? I mean, we know that uh, the Phantom 3 with the 4S 5100 milliamp hour battery is going to last a lot longer than, say, a 5100 3S battery, simply because we're putting out more voltage. The motors will not draw as much amperage, which means right. they won't pull as much actual battery power, so you have a longer endurance. So uh, really excited to go over this new drone. Yeah, and one other thing I'll preface this, uh, this podcast with is that we understand that there are new iterations of any given drone coming out all the time. All the time. And so we're very flexible and open to an improvement coming within weeks or months of any given review. Yes. So got to keep that in mind. I want the listeners and viewers to understand that. Definitely. And one thing I will say is that testing drones is different than testing cameras and testing other pieces of equipment because testing a camera, yes, takes skill, but testing a drone, something that's flying, you have to have multiple points of reference of skill. So, you know, flying uh, systems, photography, videography. So I think it, it really is a different uh, is a different 
category in its own. Yeah, and a, and a huge difference in terms of whether or not somebody is going to be using it for photography versus videography. Yeah. And that's a huge oh, difference yeah. for you. Oh, yeah. And whether you're going to recommend something to somebody. And, and so that's something to keep in mind as well. Definitely. Well, let's go ahead and cool. go to the question. Hey, Drone You. This is uh, Clint. I'm here in Wyoming, and uh, I've been listening to your guys' podcast uh, for about a couple months now, and I went back and listened to all of them. And I haven't heard you talk about the Blades uh, Chroma drone, and there's several guys on YouTube that are comparing it to the DJI Phantom 3. And I was just wanting to get your take on the Chroma drone um, as far as maybe doing some real estate videography with it and uh, get your point of view. They, they've got the 4K and the 1080, and I'm looking at maybe getting the 4K, but I uh, wanted to get your input on that. I love hearing that people compare the, the and I'm not a DJI fanboy, and, and I just got to say I love competition, so I want to put those two things out there. Right. Competition means that we're going to get better and better drones as time goes on. Sure. Um, but I do find it really funny when people try to compare a Blade Chroma drone against a DJI. That Why is, is it funny, though? Um, because when we pull off the, the cover... Okay. Let's, uh, let's take, like, all right, we're looking at two cars, two brand new cars, right? We're looking at a Kia... We're looking at a BMW. We pull the, the hoods under. Even though the Kia looks just like the BMW, when we pull the hoods back, we see twin turbo V6 versus a single turbo I4. You know what I mean? Kay. So when that's why I find it funny that someone's comparing a Phantom 3 to the Chroma because it's like comparing a Kia to a BMW. Okay. And so you're going to go into why that is. Basic specific components and Absolutely. what the differences are. Yeah, so first things first, um, the GPS systems are very different. DJI utilizes a dual GPS system. So we have a GLONASS system and we utilize the USA uh, AGPS system. Uh, why is that important? Well, that gives us uh, hover accuracy to a level we've quite never seen before. And I mean, we're talking okay. inches of hover accuracy. That way we can take long exposure photos. So if you want to take aerial photos at nighttime and you want to see the light streaks kind of going on the road and you've got a great, beautiful mm. scenery with, that's lit up, you know, David Boggs, uh, one of our Drone U members, right. I swear he is one of the best when it comes to long exposure. He's got some beautiful shots. Oh, yeah. Did you see the one I posted on Instagram? I did, and yeah. it's sweet. <laughs> it is so good. I even joked with him. I'm like, maybe you should teach the uh, long exposure <laughs> class. <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the Chroma drone does not have dual GPS. It has singular GPS. Uh, and that being said, the Chroma also does not have vision positioning systems. So... If you were in an environment where you didn't have GPS or you wanted to fly inside and you wanted some stability, you would not be able to have those things. And now let's go into the issue of endurance and propulsion. Um, when looking at the specs of the Chroma, it's got a 3S battery, which means natively it's pushing out 11.1 volts. We all know that that's going to range from 10.5 to 12.5 volts. Uh, but what does that mean? It means the motors have to work harder in order to produce the same amount of thrust if you were in different environments. So if you live in LA, it's going to fly just fine. You will not even be able to tell the difference. Uh, it'll fly a little bit slower than, say, a Phantom 3 because of just the pure power and torque. Um, but if you were to say you want to go up to Big Bear and you mm -hmm. want to fly some, some snowboarding or something, right. the Chroma is not going to do it because you're at a higher elevation. It's going to work so hard. It's going to be pulling so much energy out of that battery, your endurance is going to drop very quickly. So when you say it's not going to do it, specifically you mean you're going to have very little time in the air before you're having to switch batteries, and it's gonna, that's going to be a challenge. Yes, okay. absolutely. So now I didn't get the chance to see if the battery had a balance, um, a balance circuit on it. Okay. But that's another great thing about DJI batteries is that overall they're safer mm -hmm. than non-balanced batteries because they will not let you overcharge them. They will not let you uh, over-discharge them. Um, they won't let you charge them when they're warm, and they won't let you charge them when they're too cold. All of those things affect whether you're going to have a battery fire or not. Okay. So DJI is trying to um, take the safety aspect very seriously, whereas other drone makers are, are not, and, and that's what it is. So you would have a lot less endurance um, with this drone at high altitude. And in fact, I was just reading a review on CNET.com, mm -hmm. right. and the guy was like, oh, I love the unique drone, and I was just like, 
he compared the chroma to a look like of the unique Typhoon Q500 4K. Okay. And he's like, oh, a drone that I absolutely loved. And it's like, all right, well, I see that you're from New York City. I can understand why you would love that drone at sea level. But as soon as you go to 2,000 feet with an unbalanced battery, you're going to get one, two, th- two flights out of that thing before the battery puffs to begin with. And you're going to have maybe six or seven minutes of flight time. I mean, we saw this when we tested the drones, you know, and we were only at 6,000 feet. So, right. um, well, One of the things that it says in the specs for the Chroma is that the battery included can last up to 30 minutes. I don't believe that at all. It's yeah. a 3S, what was it, a 5,400 milliamp hour battery, I believe they said? Yeah, I don't see that in here, but anyways. So, um, it was in the review that uh, I looked at, right. but I will say that I just don't see how that's possible. Um, I think it's another one of those, they promise flight time uh, that's really unreasonable. Again, if you were at, say, 1,500 feet of elevation, if you were in Las Vegas, or if you were in uh, you know, Phoenix, Arizona, you're not going to get that flight time just simply because the pitch of the props, uh, the amperage draw of the motors, and there's so many other things. I mean, it's... Just well, I, I don't think we've yet to find a drone, a consumer-level drone that's getting 30 minutes. Have we? That's true. I mean, it it's seems actually, like... So I learned it's a 6,300 milliamp hour battery. So I could right. see maybe like 18 minutes, but... Right. 30 minutes, you're only going to see that on, like, the Matrice 100, okay. which takes two 6S batteries. Which is another category. Yeah. So that, I mean, that doesn't even, it's not comparable. It's apples and oranges at this point. Pretty much, as yeah. Far as, okay. Um, and that's why I'm disappointed, and I think um, you we're going to see more and more issues with people buying drones, and we're going to see uh, a redaction or uh, from the Chinese market itself because someone tried selling drones to the federal government saying they'll get 30 minutes of flight time when realistically they got 12 or 15, and yeah. they were sued for that. Wow. So I don't think that, that we're not going to see the Chinese move their numbers down because they can't sell the U.S. military. No one will buy Chinese stuff, which I don't really understand, but it is what it is. That being said... Um, <clears throat> that being said, I don't think the Chinese are going to change the way that they calculate their numbers anytime soon because simply there's no form of repercussions for them. Right. And again, we've not flown this, so maybe by some miraculous uh, event, it would last 35 minutes. And obviously, I say that in jest, that's not going to happen. Yeah. But we just I just always want to make sure that, that we're very, very clear about, yes, it, we're saying that it's not going to last that long, but we've not flown it. That's very true. But we can make an educated guess by saying, Absolutely. all right, if the prop is this pitch, this length, if the motors are this type, um, you know, hey, it'll, it'll, it'll get, you know, this kind of flight time. Yeah, correct. Um, that being said, it does look like it has the exact same camera as the Typhoon. Which is a pretty good camera, right? Well, the benefit of that camera is the fact that, at least on the Typhoon side, and again, I haven't seen the control interface for the Chroma drone, but the one benefit with the Unique is that that camera is fully manual, meaning okay. there's no there's no software-oriented or software-controlled um, uh, camera settings. Like on the Inspire, if you put it in shutter priority, you know, you try to get a specific shutter, it's going to lock in your ISO. You can't change that. Um, there are little things like that that will make a difference. Whether the Chroma can do fully manual uh, control, well, frankly, I just don't know because we haven't flown it. But I'll say this. If someone is comparing the Chroma to a Phantom 3 and they're thinking, should I get a Phantom 3 or should I get a Chroma? I, I mean, the clear leader in the market, there's a reason why DJI represents 70 or 80% of the commercial market. It's because they make the best vehicles. They're the most reliable, and that's what really it comes down to is you want the most reliable vehicle that has the longest endurance, the most capability, and the most stability. Uh, and that's why DJI is the clear winner over and over again because they have the best stability, they have the best hover control, their endurance is really good. Remember, in a Phantom 3, you're getting a 4S battery. So the voltage coming out is 14 volts instead of 11 volts, which mm-hmm. means the wo- the motors don't have to work as hard. You're not pulling as many amps out of the ESCs. So everything in general is going to work better, uh, which means you're going to get more flight time. So uh, that being said, again, you've got VPS with the Phantom 3. You've got... Uh, <laughs> I know personally that the Phantom 3 will last you about a 1,000 hours of flight uh, because I got uh, our Phantom 2s and our Phantom 3s at least up to about, I think it was 980 hours or something like that. Um, That being said, 
you can't go wrong with the Phantom 3. I mean, I, I love to see this competition because it will push DJI to do more things. Right. Um, but at the same time, there you can't compare a Chroma and a DJI. It's just not even on the same level. Yeah, well, the Chroma, who makes that? Do you know, who, or where are they? So that's Horizon Hobby. Horizon Hobby, um, if you remember, Horizon Hobby was the group that showed the flamethrower drone from that crazy kid up in no the northeast. Kidding. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they had Horizon Hobby, like, that's plastered right. in okay. the bottom left corner. That's who Horizon so Hobby they've, is. So they've produced this drone? Supposedly, yeah. The Blade okay. series is a Horizon Hobby, cool. um, what is it called, uh, manufacturer. So, And a lot of people like Horizon Hobby because they've got good customer support. But again, if you are expecting 30 minutes of flight time, if you are expecting um, you know, indoor control, if you're expecting really good hover control for long exposure photos, you're not going to get that with the the chroma drone you're gonna get that with a phantom three and the reality is it's not that much less at all if any than the phantom three right um the phantom three 4k is 799 which is a little bit less than this 1200 dollars setup um that being said though the phantom three you'd still have to buy an ipad so you're gonna be spending you know four or five hundred bucks right uh, buying an ipad or 300 bucks i, I forget how much it's like 350 ours. probably to get the mini yeah right, that's the that one we need. have right yeah um, so that being said, you know, this, the benefit to this drone is just like the benefits to Kia. You get a lot for your money. Does it mean that you're going to get the best for your money? No. But in the world of aviation, there's no Kias. <laughs> That's all I have well, to say. <laughs> okay. So, but that said, I mean, you wouldn't necessarily, I don't know, maybe you would, but you'd like tell somebody, do not buy this drone. Or if I was looking at Rob, my, fr it, Rob, if you came to me as a friend on the flying field behind Drone You. And you saw me flying out there, which happens every day. And mm -hmm. so you walked up to me, which happens every day. And you said, uh, you know, Paul, I'm thinking about buying this Chroma drone. Um, it's been kind of between that or a Phantom 3. I'd be like, <laughs> Phantom 3 all day? Yeah. <laughs> like, not even a comparison. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, you don't want to think about that? <laughs> no. I just gave everyone the, like, very toned down. I'm, I, you can put Paul Tamer as the title for today, that's okay, because it, it actually oh, but works. Just for today. Just for today, okay. yes. I just want to clarify uh, that. Um, because I, I, I'm trying to, you know, give the toned down version of, you know, system, not, not systematically, the, this is why this is a, you know. Not mm -hmm. the boys just hanging out the park version? No. Where we get yeah, a little bit more colorful language. Yeah. and. <laughs> See, now, if this drone had some sort of um, competitive advantage or unique um, competitive you know, like if this thing was waterproof, right? That would put it in a whole new light. It would have a whole new value because right. you can't do that with a Phantom 3. If it touches the water, it's gone, you know? Yeah. So that, if it had some sort of competitive differentiation from the DJI series, then sure, you know? And this is the first iteration, right? Or it, it hasn't been around that long. I No, I believe this one is very new okay. within, the, within the last year. So. so give it some time and we'll, uh, yeah, just keep our minds and... Eyes and ears open and, and wait for totally changes and improvements. And, we, you know, again, we've got to remember, why are we seeing so many copycats of the same drones? Because, you know, look at what's going on in China, right? You've got people who, uh, you've got very little IP protection. You've got people who work in one warehouse, realize they can do it better, and they start their own warehouse making the exact same thing. Right. You want to know something funny that I just learned this weekend from one of the the best drone pilots in the world. Yes. Sunny Sky Motors. Uh huh. Our T Motors rebranded. Is that right? So we have the best motors on our Y6 that we can have, which is explains why they're pulling too much amperage for those ESCs. Yeah. So uh -huh. we went a little. So we went a little cheap. We on the went ESCs. a little skimpy on the ESCs. Yeah, bad idea. Don't do that. They were. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that's a way a whole nother story. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm, but anyways. I, I'm hoping uh, one of the things I also learned is that a lot of the drone pilots today are the FPV pilots, excuse me, are expecting to see 500 to 1,000 class size racers here soon. They're like, that's that's the way the market's moving. You mm -hmm. know, they want to see faster, more aggressive drones. So I don't know if you walked in this morning and saw I brought the Sky Hero 700 millimeter series. Oh, no, today. I didn't see that. So what I'm thinking is instead of putting everything back together on the Y6, put it as a quadcopter on the Sky Hero, because then we don't have to buy as many ESCs, use it at, in NASA or put the Naze 32 system mm. on there and race it. Oh, boy. 
That'd it's all good. about racing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what it's all about. Anyways, um, thank you very much for the question, Clint. We really appreciate it. We do. And we'll certainly keep you all updated as we uh, get a chrome, chroma, pardon me, in the door and we actually start flying it. Yeah. Again, I want to, you know, I really want to press this. You can only make so many decisions based off of whether you have truly had the full capability to test it. Yep. And there are so many, excuse my language, half but half butted because I half can't butted. say you know the other <laughs> word. Family I'm so friendly. proud of you. So proud of you, Paul. Half butted. He's growing up, John. He's he's. <laughs> anyway, um, there are so many reviews that are done by people who just simply don't understand what they're doing. Even some of the guys that are big on Twitter and whatnot, like um, who is the drone girl who you know sits behind a computer most of the time. It's like. Come on, guys. We need people who really actually fly these things to write the reviews. That's why I love the FPV community, because it's so authentic and genuine. It's pretty raw. Yeah, I like it a which lot. Which is, is cool. No, absolutely. So, all right. Thank you, Clinton. Guys, if you have a question, obviously, you can go to askdroneu.com. Give us your question there. We love to hear your accents. That makes it a lot of fun for us and for the listeners. It definitely does. And I have to say, Rob, I'm really excited about the new website. So if you go on and you log on to ask a question, you may notice that the website has changed a little bit. We're really proud of it. We're really excited to get that out. Uh, and you can kind of get a sneak peek into what our courses look like. And a lot of people couldn't do that before. And it, it kind of inhibited them uh, from becoming a DroneU member. But the more and more I see online where people are writing raving reviews about us. So hopefully you can understand what it's all about, what Drone U is really all about. And if you love the podcast, we would greatly appreciate it if you took a look at the website and give us your feedback. Yeah, thedroneu.com is where you'll find the new website. And that's going live today. So you might go there and it's not quite there yet. Just check back because that's going to happen today. And then, Paul, we have some unfortunate news. What's and that? I think a lot of people already know this, but many don't. So we thought we'd mention it. It has to do with the Spaceport Games. Oh, we yeah. We wanted to mention on air what's going on with that. So a lot of people have been busting my chops. Rightfully on, so. On what's going on with Spaceport <laughs> Games. And uh, will you understand the whole drone registration thing? Which, by the way, we're going to have another episode on this week because the deadline is on Friday. Make sure you go to FISDO or order the paper forms. That's part 47. Order the paper forms to register your drone if you're going to register it. Um, you know, the FAA is saying, oh, we've registered 300,000 drones. No, you haven't. You've registered 300,000 people, not drones, if we remember how this whole thing works. So we're going to have a new update on that. Remember, there are about 3 million drones in, in the United States, and only 300,000 have been, quote, unquote, registered. So we're going to have a follow-up on that, what you should do. Um, but that being said, we do have some news. We do. Yeah, and it's not great news. Yes, I forgot what the news was. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bottom line is that we're not we're not going to be a part of the spaceport dr- uh, games. Yeah, sorry, I went off on a tangent there. We're not going to be a part of the spaceport games. The spaceport games are actually not happening anymore. They've been canceled. Why? Because of registration. Um, when the AMA fought the FAA, the FAA stopped allowing AMA sanctions for drone events. And we're speculating here. We don't have any firsthand knowledge of. Oh, we we do. I've well, t- I've talked to the AMA about this. Like I talked okay. to. Uh, uh, Rich Hansen. They're not approving any AMA sanctions anymore. That's why it was cord was cut because the spaceport is a public institution. Okay. And we had to have the AMA sanctioning to actually do the event itself. Right. And because the FAA is not approving any of those AMA sanctions, no more spaceport games. Yeah, which is unfortunate. We were looking forward to that, but we might be thinking of doing some things on our own in the future. Is that yes? The I'm idea? already working on uh, something right now, uh, but it's going to be an indoor facility, so cool. we don't have to deal with any. Well, yeah. I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> so uh, that being said, uh, oh boy, we're gonna have a uh, we're <laughs> what? No. No. We're going to have a special <laughs> section just for Drone U members where we're going to have special classes uh, taught by industry professionals around the world. And hopefully we can bring on, uh, you know, some people who work in the movie industry and, and show people what it's like to actually be on set. Uh, and also, we, the reason we wanted to do Spaceport Games was to have not only FPV races, but to have races as a whole, race consumer drones, race movie set drones, have endurance challenges. And we're still going to do that in a future event that will be indoors. Yes. So, Looking forward to that. And we that'll are. be fun. A lot of planning to go into that, but um, somewhere down the road, that'll happen. Definitely. I feel like we rambled a lot today, so we're going to end it really fast. <laughs>
Anyway, thanks guys so much for listening and we really appreciate it. And if you do have questions, go to askdroneu.com and upload those right away. If you'd like to follow us on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, let us know and do know that around every day at noon, mountain time, so that's 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, we'll be live streaming the podcast to YouTube. So if you want to see um, Rob's pretty bald head and my pretty nice and pretty blonde hair, which could use some work today. Uh, <laughs> no, I think it looks fine, actually. I think it looks a little... LA-ish, and I'm not a fan. I don't anyway. know what that means, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more Whatever. sloppy, and it's supposed to look oh, cool. Is that what it yeah. Is? Sloppy. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for us today. My name is Paul. Yeah, I'm Rob, and this is Ask Drone You. We believe that videos, images, words, and sounds have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone Youth.